Hello, YouTube Sidekick here with another installment of an Iron Bomber's Guide to the Galaxy. So today we're going to do another little whiteboard session and a range demo. Today we're going to talk about what happens if you don't use a constant dive approach like we've been talking about. What happens if at the bottom of the dive you start to pull up on the stick? And the other thing is, even in a constant dive approach, what happens if your speed is different across different runs? So we'll take a look at those two things and we'll go out and do a little demo of the G loads on the range. So let's get started. Let's take a look at a basic bomb drop. We have a plane and a bomb and a target that we want to hit. The pilot is going to fly a constant dive angle line. And when his bomb fall line intersects the target, drops the bomb and the bomb falls on the target. So let's take a look at the effect of G loading on the bomb drop. This time we have our plane and our bomb and our target. And the pilot starts out by flying his constant dive angle line. But as his bomb fall line intersects with the target, uh, let's say he starts his pull out a little prematurely and he pulls back on the stick. Well, what happens? The bomb fall line cants upward. And this time, when he releases his bomb, it travels beyond the target before it hits the ground. Okay, let's take a look at the effect of speed on the bomb drop this time. So, standard setup, plane, bomb, target, constant dive angle line. Now, the pilot is going to roll in at a certain speed. Now, normally, obviously, his speed is going to increase. As he flies, but I'm not going to model that, it just gets too complicated. But let's say he rolls in at a certain speed. Then his uh, bomb fall line is going to intersect the target at the point here, at this uh, altitude shown in green. Now, let's rewind the situation and have the pilot roll in at a higher speed, which means that his bomb is going to have more horizontal velocity. And so the bomb fall line is going to be longer. So this time, when the bomb fall line intersects the target, the plane is at a different altitude than it was the last time. Now, that's okay if this is a plane that has something like CCIP, because the pilot will still be able to drop the bomb accurate. But if he's in a plane that isn't using CCIP, and he's trying to drop his bomb based on his altitude, then he might miss the target because he rolled in at the wrong speed. So to summarize, it's pretty simple. If you uh, add G-loading to a constant dive angle dive, you will change the impact point. If you pull back on the stick, then the impact point is going to go away from you. And if you push on the stick, then the impact point is going to move back towards you. Also, if you use a constant dive angle approach, but you do it at different speeds, then you're going to find that the impact point is a little bit different. That's not a really big deal if you're using an aircraft that ha computes the impact point for you. But when we go back to using some of the earlier planes, if we want to release at a constant altitude, we're going to have to make sure we roll in at the same speed every time. Okay, let's go take a look at how this plays out on the range. So we're coming up to the iron bombing test range. We're going to use a fairly shallow dive. Let's or hope to go around in around 30 degrees. We're pulling out a little ways out from the range. Just get ourselves lined up here. Almost ready to roll in. Get around a little bit more. And right around there. Nice, easy pull in. We'll be looking for that 30 line. And there it is, so a little bit more than 30 degrees. Just ease ourselves out, get ourselves really good and lined up here. And just hold. And there it is. And a pretty good drop. So now just let's pause it there and let's rewind the tape back to the top of the dive here right to there and now we'll play it forward but this time we'll do it a little differently 
So as we're coming in, getting lined up, but now we're just gonna add some gentle pressure to the stick. And let's take a look at the difference we got. You can see on the left, we got the G load, and on the right, we have the original, and you can see the difference in the Gs, the target range, and also the sight picture. And let's see what we got for a result. Okay, not nearly as good. Now, it's not that it's impossible to get a good result when you're uh, pulling on the stick, but the thing is that the a pipper is moving so much faster that it's a lot harder to time your release, and that's effectively uh, what we saw there. So, that's the effect of G-loading on your bomb drop. I hope you enjoyed that. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, but for now, this is Sidekick, signing off.